Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to the third episode in our new Catch Up Fun series. Uh, I'm Fabio Galvanini and I'll be moderating today's session along with my colleague Sue Vini. During the webinar, you'll be able to hear and see our speaker, Anne Robinson, and to see her slides. You won't need a microphone. If you want to chat to each other or interact with Anne during the webinar, please use the chat. If you'd like to share your comments with all attendees, make sure that you select the all panelists and attendees option in your chat window. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions for Anne or about any of the content that we shared, please write these in the Q&A tab, which you should be able to see in your control panel. And we will answer as many of these as we can after the presentation. The recording of today's webinar will be on our Catch Up Fund site by next week, and we'll email you a copy of the recording plus your attendance certificate also next week. I'm very pleased to welcome Anne as this afternoon's presenter. Anne Robinson is a teacher, a teacher trainer, writer, presenter, consultant, and author of several Cambridge publications, including For Young Learners, the Fun 4 series, and the fun skills and fun skills level levels three and five. Anne enjoys connecting with teachers around the world. As she says, we all have so much to learn from each other. Right now, Anne tells me how much she misses traveling and the buzz of live conferences. So Anne, welcome. Thank you for being with us and over to you. Thank you, Fabio. And hello to everyone. I'm amazed at just how many countries uh, we've got people here today from. Excellent news. Um, so I'm speaking to you from uh, the north of Spain uh, in Santander. And uh, for me, it's just after four o'clock, but I'm sure that for a lot of you, it's a totally different time. Uh, lovely to have you all here and, um, and to share ideas and experiences here via this webinar. Okay, so let's start. So today I'm going to show to share five ideas with you. Um, the five ideas, some of them are linked um, and you'll see the link I'm sure as we go through. So what's on my screen? What am I showing you here on my screen? Yes, it's a CD. Okay, and we're going to take a CD. So whose is the CD on this slide? Okay, yes, it's my CD, okay, uh, not yours, okay. Um, and it's a CD that I no longer use. It was a CD that came with a camera that I no longer have. And I think like a lot of people, I have quite a few CDs that I don't use these days. Um, do you use CDs in your teaching situation, in your class, in your classes? Yes. Okay. A lot of people are moving on to uh, maybe using audio files on their computer or even using uh, the audio on the on the internet somewhere in the on the on the internet or in the in the cloud okay uh, but it's definitely true that a lot more computers these days do not have the cd player incorporated into them so it's something that we're sort of moving away from okay so we use cds in classes and we use them probably you've still got quite a lot of music cds i certainly have uh, quite a lot of music cds <clears throat> and where do you keep CDs and how do you keep them? How do you keep your CDs that you use for classes? Okay, yeah. And do you have a lot of CDs? So you're saying in a box, in a case, in the actual computer itself? Yeah, Simona? And 
it's important yeah to try and protect your cd so to keep it into in, in kind some kind of maybe an envelope like this one okay this one came from cambridge with an exam listening in it originally uh, i had to destroy the cd after the exam but i keep these and i use them for class and for keeping things in Okay, and why don't we use CDs very much? Well, we've, I've just said that up really, that we're moving uh, in other directions. And have you got any ideas of how we could recycle these CDs? How can we use them for other things? What can we use them for? What can we do with them? What can we make with them? Okay, so Pamela, you're saying crafts. What kind of crafts can you do with CDs? Oh, I like that, a solar system project. For kids, for their faces, right, Pamela, interested. Yes, uh, I've tried breaking them into pieces and using them to decorate a, a table, actually. Experiments, yeah. Do people where you live hang them outside apartments on balconies or in gardens? Okay, yes, we can certainly use it in maths, perhaps, because it's a circle. You've seen them in cars, Pamela, and, and what were they do? What were they, how were they used in cars? To keep bears away. Okay, we don't have bears here, but uh, sounds good. Okay, yeah, and to decorate, yeah. Okay, so um, I, I took an old CD that I had, this one that I took the photograph of, and I made something to use in class because in year in the past uh, I always had I always have a set of question word cards in class for to use with students so I used to use these cards but I had an idea that I would use an old CD to make something to practice questions and to to work on questions and to work on generating ideas so what I did was I took an old CD like this. I took some very big white sticky labels and stuck them on both sides of my old CD. Then I took a ruler and I first of all divided it in half and then I made six sort of cheese portions on both sides of my CD with its white sticker. Um, and then I had some uh, letter stickers. So I used my letter stickers to write, uh, put the, the question words on my question wheel. Okay, so that was the, my two sides of my CD, which I'd covered. I made, drew around my CD, made two other circles in a different color. And then in those circles, I cut out the size of one of my cheeses, one of my question words. And I got um, a press stud, an old big press stud, you know, that you have on your clothes instead of a button. Um, and I, I first of all made a hole with a knitting needle. Yeah, so I pierced the, the center of my sticker because obviously the CD already has a hole. I made a small enough hole for my press stud so it's not too loose. And then I made my question wheel. Okay, so that's my first idea to make a question wheel. And I'm going to show you throughout the webinar how we can use this question wheel uh, to use with different activities. So we're going to look at another idea and I'm going to play you a video with this idea. Okay, so let's watch Bolt. This video is from the end of Unit 12 in Fun Skills 3, but I'm, I'm going to suggest how we could use it in different ways, or at least use the idea in different ways. Okay, just let me try and get my, right, my arrow onto the right place. Okay, so let's watch Bolt, and Bolt's going to share an idea with you. Uh, just a time, I keep losing my Thank <laughs> you.
Find a friend to work with. You need a piece of paper and a pen between you. Write the name of a sport on the paper. Pass the paper to the pair on your left. Now write the name of a different sport on the paper. You have eight seconds. Ready? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pass the paper on. Write a different sport. Ready? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pass the paper on. Keep going until you have eight different sports. Okay. So with my question wheel, I'm going to check that you've understood, let's imagine you're my students, what you have to do. So what do you need to start this activity? Can you type into the chat box, what do you need to start to do this activity? Yes, one, we need a piece of paper, okay. Um, right, and, and a pencil or a pen, yes. Okay, and what do you have to write? Or what do students have to write? They have to write, the first time they have to write a sport, yeah. And how many students, so we're looking at our how many question, how many students work together? Okay, yes, because both said work in pairs. So we've got two students working together. And how many words do they have to write in total? So how many times will they write a different word? Excellent. Okay, so we've got eight words in total. And how many seconds do, do they have to write each word? Okay, yes, so they have eight seconds to write each of the eight words. And at the end, they should have eight different words. Okay, so um, this, as I say, this video comes from the end of this unit, but I think this is a great activity to use when you're starting a new unit or a new topic with students, because different students will know different words. So by doing this activity, students can share the words they know and perhaps there are one or two words that not everybody in the class knows. So the person who wrote this different sport could explain what it means to the other students. For you as a teacher, it also gives you an idea of what students already know. So perhaps they already know all the sports that are going to be in the unit or the ones that you, you thought you were going to teach. So maybe you might decide I'll add three extra sports because they already know five of the sports or six of the sports or eight of the sports. So it helps you see what your students already know. Okay. Why not use the same activity with a picture? Okay, so we've got eight words, eight seconds. Okay, so have you got, <clears throat> excuse me, have you got a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil? Excellent. 
excellent. Okay. So what I want to like would like you to do is not in the chat box, but on your piece of paper, I would like to, I would like you to write eight words for things you can see in this picture, but not in the chat box on your piece of paper. When you have eight words on your piece of paper, can you type into the chat box, okay, or finished? And when we have 15 people who've typed finished, we'll, I'll stop the activity and we'll do something else. Okay, so on your piece of paper, eight words. When you have eight words, <coughs> excuse me, uh, type into the chat box, finished or ready, whatever you prefer. Oh, yeah. sensitive mouse again. <clears throat> Okay, now next, I would like you to use the chat box. I'd like you to type your eight words into the chat box. And when you have typed your eight words, press enter and send the words to all the participants. But don't press enter until you have typed all your eight words. Okay, so type your eight words. When you have eight words, press send to share with everybody who's online. Excellent. Okay, so uh, quite interesting. Some of you, um, mm -hmm. I, I imagine, teach more American English. Okay, so some of you said sneakers, other people said shoes. Uh, some people might say boots, okay, uh, which is also perfect as well. Um, so do, they're all words that we could use to describe those green things in the front that you put on your feet. Okay, why your teachers? So I'm going to ask you why you think I asked you first to write your eight words by hand and then to type all eight words into the chat box before you send. So why did I get you to write them on a piece of paper? Why did I not want you to, to type individual words into the chat box? So Alexandra, you're saying spelling, okay? Yeah. What what do you uh what you what do you mean by spelling? Okay. Yes, Pamela, that's definitely one reason. Okay, because sometimes if there's a lot of people online, you get the chat box moving very quickly, and uh, and it just goes by, and you can't read all the words. Okay, and uh, Wang, you just said spelling on paper is more challenging than typing. Okay, for some students, that might well be the case that um, writing is more challenging than typing, or they do it uh, quicker. Um, avoiding copying, yes, okay, uh, could, yeah. Basically, if, if I see your words, then it might stop my flow of um, imagination and my memory and my, my words, okay. Um, and especially if you think of your classes, you've got some students who are quicker than others. So writing the words on the paper and having been able to look at it should give your slower students a chance to write 
uh, the, their, their words, okay? Perhaps they won't get eight words, but they'll get six words. Um, and then when they type into the chat box, okay, again, I asked you to stop again to try and give everybody the chance to be able to at least type some of the words. So when some of you had typed eight words, not everybody had had a chance to do that, but a lot of you had. And even if you hadn't sent eight words, perhaps you've typed five words and you've practiced typing five words and spelling them. Okay, so doing it like that before giving them a chance to think before they share uh, helps, I think, the, the less confident students and gives them a chance to do the task, at least partially. Okay, this uh, picture goes with a reading text. Okay, and it's about four children and in the text we read about three of the children and the things that they do and the things that they did in the holidays. So I'm going to just show you now the text. Um, I'd like you just to read the text uh, to get an idea of which, what belongs to each person and what they did in the holidays and what they do uh, generally uh, in, in, in terms of sport and their hobbies. Okay, so uh, once you've finished reading the text, again, can you type into the uh, type, uh, text box, uh, chat box, sorry, even, ready. Okay, and when we get 15 readies, we will do the next activity. Right, so we've got 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. <laughs> right. So again, okay, don't stop as soon as the first person types into the chat box. I would say maybe take, uh, if you've got a class, what, of 10 students, when six of them or seven of them have typed into the chat box or eight, or you could even do all of them. Okay. And you can give the fastest student the task of counting how many people have typed ready into the, the chat box. Uh, if you want to do it more quickly with younger learners, then you could just get them to type in a letter rather than a word or they uh, so you can or OK, OK, which is a shorter word. OK, so I'm hiding the text now. OK, and again, I would like you to type in the chat box, but until you have eight words, do not press send. Type into the chat box eight words that you remember seeing in the text. But don't press send until you have eight words in the chat box. May, you haven't got eight words, so don't press send if you can. Any words that you saw in the text, Belter? Yeah, could be any words. Okay, and we've got eight there. We've got three names. Diana, yes, we've got activities right and now we're starting to get a lot of collections of eight words great okay look back if you've typed if you have typed <clears throat> your words into the chat see if you can scroll back up a bit and see has anybody got exactly the same eight words as you have or how many matches have people got with your words? Is there anybody who's your twin in another part of the world and has the same words as you?
Okay, and I was just thinking we could do again the eight seconds uh, bolt. Yeah, if you are uh, similar to you, Diana, um, we could do the eight, seven. Okay, so I could get you to type your eight words, and then when I count down to one, is when you press send, and everybody can send them together, and then the chat box really would move very quickly, wouldn't it, if we were using the chat box? Okay. So, just giving the that put pressing pause, allowing uh, the the slower students uh, a bit more time to do the task. Okay, um, the verbs in this text are quite important. The the topic of uh, hobbies and and sports is important, but also the verbs, because this text deliberately mis mixes. Uh, the present simple for things, uh, hobbies and things that you do every week or, or often um, and contrasting it to think different things that you did in the holidays or that these children did in the holidays. So revisiting any text, okay, get them to um, write or, or handwrite and then you could get them to shout them all out, okay, um, or whisper them. Uh, or share them, okay, or uh, say them in alphabetical order, okay, get them to find eight verbs in the text, okay, and then you can focus on the, um, the forms, okay, so we've got the irregular flu, uh, her kite, okay, so you could, which is, which is the present simple, which is the past simple, and you could look um, at the regular and in irregular verbs if you wanted to. Okay, can you find eight places in the text? So Velta was the last person to type in the chat and she had swimming pool. Um, can you add any more places? Alina had school. So Alina there's got five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stay safe. Eight. Well done, Veronica. You've got eight there. Okay, yeah. And as I say, you could um, put add a bit of extra challenge and say, can you can you type them in alphabetical order, or can you put them in order from fewest letters, shorter words, to longest word? Okay, you could add little extra challenges, or, or perhaps the stronger students that you want to give an extra challenge to say, Adrian, I'd like you to type your eight places in alphabetical order, for example. Oops, sorry. Can you find eight names in the text? How many names can you find? Okay, Anna. <laughs> so how many names can you find in the text? Okay, Han Hande, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your, your, your name right there, Velta, yeah. Yeah, there are four names, aren't there? These four uh, children who go to this uh, school. And can you find any other people in the text that we haven't got names for? Yes, so we've got her grandparents. Okay, so you could get the students to add the grandparents uh, names to the text. Yeah, Mariana, we've also got friends in the text, haven't we? So who are Alice's friends that she's going to skip with 
in the playground. Uh, so, um, and what were the, what are the names of her cousins that she skipped with in the garden in the holidays? Okay. So students adding um, something to the text, in this case, uh, giving the people in the text names. This is very good preparation for when they have to write stories or tell stories, for example, in the A2 flyers uh, reading and writing te test or the uh, speaking test, okay, because it's very natural for uh, students to add stories, uh, sorry, to use names in stories. So getting them to imagine what these people's names might be is very useful practice for when they come to write a story. Okay, other things that perhaps aren't in the text, but you can get students to think about and answer. How old do you think Eva, Matt, Alice and Pat are? You saw their lockers, you saw their their equipment, their sports equipment. How old do you think Eva, Matt and Alice are? Okay, there's no right answer. Okay. And um, you could ask students to say why they think they are nine or 10. Okay. Um, but there's no right or wrong answer. We don't know. Okay. But they're certainly not 40. And they're certainly not three, I don't think. Yeah. Um, how many? Okay. So how many days does Eva go swimming every week? So Majana, you're saying every day. So it's for that for you is seven days. Okay. Uh, it's every day after school. So how many days would she have school? Does she also go at the weekend? Okay. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. I would say minimum five and it could be seven. Uh, and you have, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just on weekdays. Okay. So again, get them to imagine um, what they think the answer to that question is, I'm just going to try and find my question word. Um, okay, so what about how often? Can you think of a question to ask about uh, the text? Something about how often? And not about Eva, because I've already asked you about how many times she goes swimming. So another person with how often? Yeah, good one, Wang. So how often does Matt play hockey? Okay, we have the answer in the text. What about, yes, do we know how often Matt goes climbing, Frida? Okay, so it sounds as though he does go climbing uh, in the mountains sometimes. Um, and do you think now that he's been in, to the sports center, do you think he might go more often? Yes, uh, uh, Taufik. Uh, how often does Alice uh, draw pictures? Yeah, does she draw every day? Excellent. Okay, so with our question wheel then, we can uh, challenge students. Yeah, you could show students the question like I have at the bottom of the slide here, or they could challenge each other. Okay, let's imagine you've got two teams and Team A says, right, Team B, you have to think of a question with how often. Um, okay, and challenge each other to create questions about a text. And as I say, the answers don't have to be in the text. It's great if they aren't and the students can imagine. Okay, so that was my eight, eight seconds, eight things. My next idea is based on one of the features of the Fun Skills series, and it's an, the idea of thinking big, thinking uh, in, in groups, thinking in categories, and definitely thinking outside of the walls of the classroom. So on the slide, you can see a think big. This activity is from the same unit where we've just seen the picture and the text. 
and we're getting asking students which sports or games do you play or do people play with these balls okay and we can take this further okay we can do different activities with think big so i looked through fun skills three which is the book that i was uh, using for the text and i found other balls for other sports okay so students could look through their 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 book and find them or you could take them to the sports center or you could ask your sports teacher if you're speak, uh, teaching at a school maybe they can bring in balls and uh, you can talk about you know are they hard or soft what are they made of do you and then talk about do you catch them do you hit them do you do you bounce them whoops um, and other ways of classifying so you could uh, organize balls in terms of size from the smallest to the biggest or and this changes slightly the order from the lightest from the table tennis ball which is very light down to a basketball which is heavier okay and Again, thinking big, which sports don't we use a ball in? Okay, so if you go to the Olympic uh, sports page, you could find a huge list of sports and not all of them, a lot of them don't use balls. Uh, and again, I, I found these pictures of other sports where you don't use a ball in fun skills. And where you are now, is there something that's round like a ball? What can you see, see near you that is round like a ball? An apple, Alexandra, a light bulb. Yeah. Lots of fruit are round, aren't they? The clock, Eliana, is, is round for you. A lamp, yes, lamps are very often uh, round, aren't they? Especially the shade. Or oh, you've got a globe, that's very inspiring. Your laptop is round, wow, sounds exciting. Your head is round, yeah. <laughs> Balloons from your daughter's birthday party, congratulations. Happy birthday to your daughter, Julissa. Julissa. Okay, right. So again, making these connections, okay, um, with balls, uh, because balls are round. Um, which other things are round? Again, I looked in fun skills and I found lots of round things. Uh, so making connections. You could talk about why balls are round. Why are wheels round? If wheels were square or balls were square, what couldn't we do with them? Or what would be different? Okay, so again, getting them to think big and <clears throat> move outside the classroom walls. Okay, I'm going to show you now the second part. No, I'm not going to show you the second part yet. That's idea five. I'm going to show you another activity. Um, and again, it's uh, from the same unit about hobbies and sports. So, uh, questions, okay. Uh, read the poster, okay. So they're going to read a poster. What's the poster about? Yeah, so my what question. What's the poster about that they're going to read? Okay, and uh, when they have finished the uh, reading the poster about origami, what are they going to do next? So again, my checking instructions. So what are you going to read? A poster about origami classes. What are you going to do next? Once you've read the poster about origami. So you're not going to fold paper. What are you going to do? 
Yeah, so you're going to listen and you're going to complete a poster and the poster is about a different hobby. It's about balloon classes. Okay. So apart from predicting what they might uh, need to write, which is obviously very important, a real life skill is to think about uh, the layout and the visual aspect of uh, posters. So do you think the poster is going to be landscape, like a landscape painting? Or is it going to be like a portrait, like a photograph of a person or a picture of a person? Do you think it's going to be black and white? Or do you think there'll be some color on the poster? Do you think the poster will have a title? And do you think there'll be pictures on the poster? Okay, so We've checked instructions, what they're going to have to do. And then before I get, I show them the poster, I get them to think about these things, okay? And there's a very good reason why I'm doing this. Then I show you the posters, okay? So we, they, they read the information about the origami classes. And then they listen to the information about where the balloon classes are, when they are, and what you can learn to make with balloons. Okay, and I go back again to my questions. Uh, so we have a title, yeah, we've got the balloon classes, we have color, but we didn't have balloons. So I added a picture of some balloons. This morning, some teachers were saying, and it's true, there is a circle in the background, which could be a balloon, perhaps. And there are also these circles in the corner but they're actually the drawing pins that put the poster onto the notice board. Then the task is for students to make a poster about their favorite sport or hobby. <clears throat> and we give them some questions to help them with the content. Okay, and this is the content that they should include. <clears throat> Again, before they actually make their poster, I would get them to think about and choose whether they're going to use their landscape or portrait. Are they going to use color? Which colors? What kind of letters are they going to include? What, if they're doing it uh, digitally, there is a lot of different fonts that they can choose from. So which ones are they going to choose? Which part of the poster, perhaps the title, they're going to make bigger? Are they going to add pictures? And what pictures are they going to add? And then we use, go back to our questions and we go back to our checklist buddy. And uh, students just check their poster. Have they included where the hobby or the sport is done or where they do it? When? Uh, it happens and why they like it. And this checklist could also be used by the other students to check. Uh, if I'm presenting you my poster, you could have a checklist and you could say, yes, and on Anne's poster, I can read where, she, where the hobby is, when the hobby is, and why Anne likes it. Okay, so a little checklist to, uh, which is based on the question words, the question wheel, have I answered all the questions in my poster? Okay, and uh, the fifth idea, I am going to show you a video now. I'm gonna show you the second part of Bolt's video for my fifth idea. I'm just going to put it forward to about there. I'm so excited because we finished level three. Can you finish my sentences? I'm so excited because we finished. I'm so excited. I'm
Well done, everyone. You are Fun Skills Superstars. Okay, so my fifth idea is listen and finish. Okay, so we had both saying, uh, I'm so excited because we've finished level three. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, and students had to finish the sentence. So I'm going to say the first letters of something you can see in this picture. And I would like you to listen to my letters and into the chat box, I only want you to write the missing letters to finish the word, okay? So I'm going to say some of the letters, you type the missing letters to finish the word into the chat box. Okay, so you ready? This is my first word. H, E, L, Excellent. Okay, so you only had to, to type three letters into the chat box, which were M-E-T for met. And now I could say to you, right, type the whole word into the chat box. So type the six letters into the chat box. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Right, another one I'm going to do. K. E, Y. Can you type? <laughs> Very quick there. Very tight that one, yeah. And yeah. And can you type the whole world, whole word into the chat box? Yes. Excellent. Wow, you're so quick. <laughs> Superstars. Okay, uh, with a text. We had this text earlier. Okay, so again, uh, maybe to finish the lesson, just to review what we've been doing. Okay, uh, again, I'll show you the, the whole text. I'll show you a whole sentence from the text. And then I will just show you the start of the sentence. Okay, and uh, students can either type or we can get them, I don't know, to show, to show their hands or to say, ready, okay? And uh, to say the whole sentence. Uh, this morning, somebody was asking about how, uh, how to give uh, support perhaps to um, slower students or less confident students. So one other thing I like to do is to get them to practice, they just, Keep, they can just say their answer here in their hand and they can practice the pronunciation. So if I show you the whole sentence again, okay, so. Go to the same school, go to the, go to the same school. Okay, I give you a chance to practice, rehearse, and then everybody could say it together. I'll go to the same class. Did I go to the same? No, go to the same school, right. Okay, so a longer sentence, okay? So maybe we we'll start with some shorter sentences. So in the holidays, Alice learned to skip in the garden with her cousins. And again, I can clip the end of the sentence and you could either get them to write or as I say, to practice and then just say the whole sentence. Okay, and again, we're practicing the content, we're practicing the language from the text. Okay, so my five ideas. <clears throat> we had my question wheel. Okay, we had the find eight in eight seconds. We had, we were thinking big, thinking outside the classroom and making connections. We were checking thinking about how to create a poster, the information that we were asked to include in the poster, 
and we can check that we've done all of those things. And then we can spell words and get students to finish them, or we can show them sentences, or we can say sentences from the text and get them to finish them. Okay, so there are my five ideas. Um, and now uh, we will have time for any questions. Uh, we, there's a question and answer box. So if uh, you want to um, ask any questions, the best place is to put it into the question and answer box. I will keep an eye, uh, an eye also on the chat box just in case. Uh, but the best place for any questions you might have is in the questions and answers box. Thank you very much, Anne, for such an inspiring session and um, really a lot of lovely ideas. Um, uh, just a quick reminder for everyone who's joined us today that um, a certificate of attendance uh, and the link to the recording will be sent to you um, next by next week. And uh, while you think of some questions to, to ask Anne, I'd just like to share with you some information about some of the resources Anne showed you today. So uh, the activities that Anne showed you, some of them, at least most of them, uh, were actually taken from uh, uh, Fun Skills, which is a six course, uh, uh, six levels course uh, with, uh, with the characters. You've seen some of them in action today. And uh, all of these characters were actually designed by children. And that's, that's a great feature because it, it really, really um, brings in a different level of creativity for sure. It's a skills-based course and um, each of the 12 units, 12 short units uh, in each level uh, actually starts off with a video animation. So you've seen some video animations today. So that's, that's the kind of um, approach we take uh, in, in every unit. And of course, uh, the characters are not just there as a sign of creativity, but they also have uh, pedagogical function. So we've seen today Think Big Giraffe, uh, which helps kids to establish connections uh, with what is in the classroom and with what, with what's outside as well. And of course, the fun videos, animations that are there also for the songs, not just as a unit starter. Uh, fun skills uh, um, at the exam levels, which is to say levels two, four and six, uh, um, is also available with the mini trainers, which are um, collections of two authentic practice tests, uh, fully guided, so you can find uh, a lot of uh, useful tips uh, on uh, for your kids and for them to perform at their best uh, when they do uh, young learners exams. Uh, you can also find a lot of other activities um, in uh, our World of Fun website, so worldoffun.cambridge.org. You will find some very nice downloadable worksheets that will uh, um, introduce you to the characters from Fun Skills. So that's freely downloadable. Uh, you can also find a little bit of flashcards and classroom posters uh, along with uh, a, lot, uh, a lot more actually. So go and explore it and you'll find a lot of resources for, for your classroom. So having said that, uh, I just also wanted to, before we move on to the Q&A part of, this, of today's session, just wanted to remind you that on the 29th of April uh, at 10 o'clock UK time in the morning at four o'clock um, UK time in the afternoon, um, there's, uh, there's gonna be uh, with us Claire, Claire Medwell, and she will present five fun stories for nurturing universal values in the young learner classroom. So having said that, I see there are uh, there aren't questions in the Q&A box yet, but we may actually have some in the chat box. Um, let me just check that. Have you seen any question already, Anne? Uh, not really, actually. Um, not really, I was just yeah. reading what, what, what Gwen was saying there about um, some of the text not having audio and she's made her own audio. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, um, I think, I mean, they, the fun skills have a lot of songs and a lot of uh, listening <laughs> and audios in them. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I see there's a few thank you messages coming through and we, we still have a, a couple of, um, of minutes if, if people maybe are writing very long and elaborated questions. Okay, so in fact, we, we do have one. So yeah. uh, can, can we give, 
right so can we give students more time uh, can we put them uh, in pairs especially um for idea two yep. that's from uh, taufi mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes definitely um i mean one way of supporting uh, less confident learners is perhaps to pair them with somebody who is more confident um so definitely working with pairs or in groups can help uh, less confident students but I always try and find, let everybody at work at some point individually. Um, and as I say, one of the things uh, I think is really important is giving them time to rehearse. But if you've just put, press that pause button and don't get everybody to shout out the answer, give them some thinking time. And as I say, add perhaps a little extra challenge uh, to somebody who always finishes very quickly. Um, they can also be the monitor, yeah? So uh, maybe a stronger student could go round um, I know it's quite difficult at the moment with uh, with COVID, but um, you know the stronger students uh, cannot not only work in pairs with another student, but they could also um, help somebody who's having problems um, and even you know teach them some of the language. Sure, thank you so much. And there's also another question from Miriana. She asks, how how do you reward students? How do I reward them? <laughs> um, I've never been one. I, I know teachers, I've got friends who give, um, who give out sweets. Um, I've never been one to give out sweets very much. I've got stickers. I've actually got some wonderful stamps as well, but they're not, I mean, you can obviously give stars. I know when my mum was a teacher, she always used to have st sticky stars and stick them on students' work. Uh, so a sticker can, can be a reward. Um, I think very often the best reward is your praise yeah you're and trying to find somebody to to praise uh, something to praise I should say about every student is is very important yeah uh, so it could even be you know just the way that they're written their writing is very neat maybe they haven't written eight words but you know the words they have written are perfect you know they're really nice to look at and the, the spelling is good uh, and I can see another one about special needs um Special needs could be a whole set of web webinars, I think. Um, I know on the world of fun, there's certainly uh, some ideas for dyslexic uh, learners. And that's actually one of the things when I was uh, thinking about the poster activity, um, thinking about the font, yeah? So uh, there are two kinds of fonts. So there's like sans sharif and there's sharif. And the sans serif don't have all the fancy squiggles at the end of the letters. So they're usually easier to read for any learner that might have um, reading difficulties. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what kind of special needs, because obviously special needs could be absolutely everything. Um, so I'm not sure you know, what exactly you're, um, you're talking about. Uh, are you talking about dyslexia? Are you talking about concentration? Uh, yeah, and there are, there's a whole world out there of, of those. And I know there's a, a more and more information and advice and tips available online. I find I found some very, very good um, websites recently and articles. The Cambridge on the uh, World of Better Learning, there are quite a few articles as well. So that might be a good place to find. You mean concentration, Leticia? Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Changing, changing the activity, I think, and uh, yeah. I mean, changing the activity, varying the activity. Um, even on a particular day, you might have planned to do a particular activity, and then you find you can't use it because it's not the right day to use it. So I think you know tune into your students mood and uh, sometimes an activity you plan for five minutes you find you can do it for 15 and they really want to and other times you might have a longer activity you've you you plan to use for 15 minutes and you think i've got to change this or you might have to add an extra stage an extra checking of, of um, instructions or you know uh, online actually a lot of things are being uh, you know the, the learning breaks the brain breaks so again, you can find a lot of things online. There's one excellent website called Go Noodle, um, which has lots of brain breaks. Yeah, so it could just be you know doing a quick gesture. Yeah, um, and that can 
break up the activity and then students can get back down and concentrate again. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've managed to, to answer um, all questions and um, I think we've also run out of time by now. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for, for your presentation. It was, was really clear and inspiring and, and very engaging as well. So it, it was great that we, we could all join in and, and try and, and do the activity. So very hands on. Uh, thank you very much, um, everyone, for being with us today and uh, see you on the 29th of April, I hope. Yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye.